Okay, welcome to class. So from today on, we're going to dive into chapter 10, which is about applications of the wave nature of light. So there are five sections in this chapter, namely interference in thin films, single slit diffraction, the diffraction grating, electromagnetic radiation, and polarization of light. Okay, today is our first lesson in chapter 10. We're going to have a look at interference in thin films. All right, you may have noticed the colors of reflected light in a thin layer of oil in a puddle on a road, like the one shown here in figure one. To understand why reflection from a layer of oil produce this colorful pattern, we need to understand the interference of light waves when they are reflected from or transmitted through a thin layer of material, often called a thin film. Okay, so first, uh, uh, first of all, let's have a look at a concept called phase change due to reflection. When light rays traveling from air meet the upper surface of an oil layer, some light waves are reflected. Similar behavior occurs at the lower surface of the oil layer, with the result that light rays from both surfaces are reflected. These rays interfere either constructively or destructively, depending on their phase difference. For example, if the wave travels, if the ray travels from one media into a more optically dense medium, the reflected wave is inverted, so it will not constructively interference. You can see this effect for yourself by attaching one end of a spring tightly to a wall, holding the other end of the spring in your hand, and moving your wrist sharply to create a wave. The incident wave travels quickly down the string and hits the wall. The wall push, pushes against the string with a force that is equal in the magnitude and opposite in direction. According to Newton's third law of motion, this causes a wave to be inverted when it's reflected. Now suppose that the string is not fixed at one end uh, or the incident wave encounters another medium in which the wave can travel faster, then the reflected wave will not be inverted. It will have the same phase as the incident wave. A wave that goes right through the medium or is transmitted does not reflect. So it's never inverted. You can verify this by typing a long metal wire to the loose end of a string. Hold the other end of the screen, hold the other end of the wire in your hand, and move your wrist sharply as before. The instant wave will travel quickly down the wire and encounter the string. Since the string is more flexible than the wire, the string will offer little resistance. Oh, sorry, the string will offer little re resistance to the incident wave and some of the wave's energy will carry forward through the string. Whatever wave reflects back to the string will have the same phase as the incident wave. So similar to the waves in the string, light waves will also invert when you encounter the surface of more optically dense media. A more optically dense medium has a higher index of refraction. So light waves are slowed down by the medium. As we can see here in figure 2a, when an incident wave reaches a fixed end or the boundary of a medium in which its speed will decrease, the reflected wave is inverted. Here. Okay, the face is inverted. On the other hand, if the wave reaches a free end, this is a free end, as shown here in figure 2b, 
or the boundary of a medium in which its speed will increase, the reflective wave is not inverted. You can see here the phase of the inverted wave is the same with the incident wave. In this case, the, ref the reflected wave is not inverted and no phase change occurs. Okay. Okay, let's make a summary. Figure 2a here shows a wave is inverted when it reflects from a fixed end or encounters a medium in which the speed of the wave decreases. And figure 2b here shows a wave that is not inverted when it reflects from a free end or encounters a medium in which the speed of the wave increases. Okay. Be careful with the two different two cases difference here. Okay, next let's have a look at the wavelengths and the index of refraction. So how does wavelengths relate to the index of refraction? Here on the top left, figure three shows a light wave striking a thin film of oil on a glass slide. The waves reflect from the top and bottom surfaces of the film of oil. Assume that the angle of incidence is zero. In the following figure, we draw the incident ray with a larger angle of incidence so that the two reflect rays are easily visible. Okay, But in fact, assume the angle of incidence is zero. Okay, so figure three shows light waves reflect from the top and bottom surfaces of a thin film of oil on a glass. The indices of refraction are related as follows. An air is smaller than a film, which is smaller than a glass. Okay, so here for a film of thickness T, we use letter T to denote the thickness of the thin film. The distance traveled by the ray reflecting off the bottom layer is 2T, right? This path difference will cause a phase difference between the rays reflected off the top and bottom layers of the film. To determine the total phase difference, however, we also need to account for the change in wavelengths of the wave traveling through the film due to the index of refraction of the film. Okay, so the frequency denoted by F and wavelengths denoted by lambda vacuum of a light wave in a vacuum are related by here, this formula, the speed of light in vacuum, which is usually noted by C equals lambda vac times F frequency, where C is a constant, which is about 3.0 times 10 to the power of eight meters per second. Here's the speed of light in vacuum. When light travels through substances with the index of refraction n, its speed v is then given by c over n, right? Since n for any substances is greater than 1, light travels more slowly in the substances than in a vacuum. The product of wavelengths in the film, lambda film, and the frequency of the light in the film, f film, equals the wave speed. Thus, we have the following relationship here. Lambda film times F film equals C over N film. You follow me? Okay. The next, comparing the two previous equations shows that the wavelengths, the frequency, or both must change when light travels from a vacuum into the thin film. So here on the bottom left, figure four shows that as the light wave travels from one medium 
to the other. The wavelength changes, but the frequency remains the same. If this were not the case, the waves just outside and just inside the film would not remain in phase, and the wave fronts would pile up at the boundary. Okay, so although the frequency of the light is unchanged as it enters the film, its wavelength changes. If you divide the previous equation here by the frequency f, the wavelength inside the film becomes here. Lambda, lambda film equals the reciprocal of the frequency times c over n film. You follow me? Okay, next, combining this with a relation between lambda and f in a vacuum here. Then this leads to this relationship. Lambda film, which is the wavelength in the thin film, equals lambda vac over n film. And the wavelength of light inside the film is thus shorter by a factor of one over n film. The same is true for light traveling in air with lambda air equals lambda wack over n air. Okay. Given that n air, which is the index of refraction of light in the air is very close to one. Well, actually N air is approximately 1.0003, very close to one. Interference effects are not usually considered in the air. Therefore, the wavelength of a light wave in the air is close to its wavelength in a vacuum. So we can approximate Lambda air equals lambda back. Okay. The ray traveling through the oil film in figure three here on the top left travels distance 2t, right? Not t, but 2t inside the film. The extra number of wavelengths denoted by here, uppercase n. This wave travels, the, the actual number of wavelengths n, this wave travels is thus given by this formula. n equals 2t over lambda film. This is the actual number of wavelengths light travels in the film. You follow me? 2t is the total distance. Lambda film is the wavelength of the light in the film. Then the ratio between these two numbers should be a number which denotes the extra number of wavelengths this light travels in the film. Okay. For example, if n has a value of four, the ray will travel four complete extra wavelengths compared with the rate reflecting off the top of the film, which is for this, this reflected light here, okay? To determine whether this combination of reflected rays produces constructive or destructive interference, we need to combine the phase change due to the path difference with phase changes due to reflection. Okay, so let's have a look at the problem in more detail. Okay, to understand what leads to the colors from a film, such as the one here in figure one, consider a thin film between here, consider a thin film between two glass slides. 
For simplicity, assume that the light is monochromatic, uh, <clears throat> chromatic, or single pure color. So it has a single wavelength. When the light ray here in figure five strikes the upper surface of the film, part of the light wave reflects and part of it transmits through the film. The transmitted part will then partially reflect it from the boundary between the material under the film and the bottom surface of the film. And part of the wave will also transmit through the bottom face, the surface. The intensity of transmitted and reflected light depends on the properties of the reflecting material. For a transparent material, much of the wave transmits and little reflects. For an opaque material, much of the wave reflects and little transmits. We will need to follow several steps to determine the relative phase of the interfering reflected waves. The difference in phase due to pass difference depends on the difference in length of the two paths and wavelengths of the light in the film. The phase change due to reflection depends on the relative sizes of the indices of refraction of the film and the surrounding substances. Okay, so now let's suppose a thin film. For example, a soap film lies between air on one side and a substances with higher index of refraction on the other, for example, glass. So that we have in figure six, the <clears throat> index of refraction of air is an air and index of refraction in the film is denoted by an film and the index of refraction on the other side, which is a glass here, is denoted by N glass. And these three numbers are one, 1.35 and 1.50, okay? So two phase changes occur when the index of refraction increases across each su successive boundary. So both wave reflecting from the thin film invert upon reflection. Since they both change by, same by the same amount, this change introduces no difference in phase between the two waves. If the number of extra wavelengths, uppercase N is the whole number, light waves that travel along rays two and three in figure six here are in phase and interfere constructively with one another. If N is not a whole number, they are out of phase for both waves having a phase change. We have this relationship here, 2T equals N times lambda over N film. Then in this case, we'll have constructive interference. On the other hand, if the difference 2t equals m plus one half then times lambda over n film, then we'll get destructive interference, where n is one, two, three, and so on, and m is zero, one, two, and so on, okay? Okay, now we look at the case when only one of the two waves has a phase change on reflection. For example, in the case of a soap film with air on both sides, okay? So note that we have air here and air here. So in this case, as shown here in figure seven, to simplify the analysis, we continue to consider case where the incident and reflect, reflected rays are all approximately normal or perpendicular to the film. This means that the rays that pass through the film travel a total distance of 2t again, where t is a thickness of the film. As before, the diagram does not show that 
the rays are perpendicular. The reason is that the rays would lie on top of each other, right? Making the diagram difficult to understand and analyze. So we have a little angle here. The index of refraction of the soap film in figure seven is 1.35. So part of ray one reflects and becomes inverted in ray two when it encounters a medium with a higher index of refraction. Part of ray one transmits through the soap film where it encounters the bottom layer of the film. It reflects and continues back through the soap film. There is no phase change when it encounters a medium with a lower index of refraction. The inverted phase change is equivalent to a shift of the wave by half lambda. Thus, when only one of the two waves undergoes an inverted phase change, we have the following relationship. If the distance, the difference 2t equals m plus one half times lambda over film and film, then we'll have constructive interference. Otherwise, if the difference 2t equals n times lambda over n film, then we'll get destructive interference, right? Again, m could be 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And n could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So these conditions depend on the thickness of the film. In other words, the thickness of the film determines the color of light that will be strongly reflected. The thicker the film, the longer the wavelengths of light that will produce constructive interference. The oil film in figure one here varies in thickness. So different colors of light are reflected. You follow me? Okay, then let's use what we have learned so far to solve a sample problem here. Okay, so consider a soap film that is the thinnest film that will produce a bright blue light when illuminated with white light. The index of refraction of the soap film is 1.35 and the blue light is monochromatic. With wavelengths 411 nanometers, which is shown here in figure eight, you need to answer the following two questions. First, can you calculate the thickness of the film if the soap covers a piece of crown glass with index of refraction 1.52? Then suppose the reflection occur instead from a soap film on water with index of refraction 1.33. Then can you determine the thickness of the film on water that will produce the same blue color of reflected light? Okay, I'll give you five minutes to consider this problem, and then we'll have a look at the solution together.
All right, let's have a look at the solution together. Okay, in question A, we know the index of refraction of the glass is 1.52. We'll use the letter N glass to note this number. And N film is 1.35. And lambda is 144 nanometers, which is 4.11 times 10 to the power of negative one meters. At the wavelengths of the blue light in vacuums. Okay, so both refractions involve inverted phases, right? since the index of refraction increases from layer to layer. Therefore, we can use a formula for constructive interference of the two waves when phase changes occur in both refractions. Reflections. We can let n equals one because we're trying to find the thinnest film, right? So we can let n equals one. Okay, so we have two t equals n times lambda blue over n film. Lambda blue over n film is a wavelength of the blue light in the film. And the distance difference 2t should equal a integer number n times the wavelength of blue light in the film. Okay, so we can solve 2t using this formula, then solve t which equals n lambda blue over 2n film. Then put all the numbers in. We have t should equal 1.52 times 10 to the power of negative 7 meters. So the thickness of the film on the glass should be 1.52 times 10 to the power of negative 7 meters. Have you got this correctly? OK, then let's consider question B. Okay, what's the difference here? The difference is that one ray is partially reflected from the upper surface and inverse because it's moving into a more optically dense medium. However, the second ray reflects from the bottom surface and does not change phase because it's moving into a less optimal, optimally dense medium. Therefore, we can use the other model, right? the formula for constructive interference of two waves with one phase change is that M equals to zero. Again, because we're trying to find the thinnest film possible to generate bright blue light, right? So in this case, we have the distance difference 2T should equal M plus one half times Lambda blue over N film. So 2T equals lambda blue over 2N film. That's a simplified formula, which can then further be simplified to T equals lambda blue over 4 times N film. Then put all the values in. We have T equals 7.61 times 10 to the power of negative 8 meters. So the thickness of the film on water is 7.61 times 10 to the power of negative eight meters. Any questions? Okay, if you don't have any questions, let's take a 10 minutes break and we'll continue our lesson in 10 minutes. Okay, welcome back to the class. Next, let's consider another problem. So here, in solar cells, incoming light passes through an untied reflective coating to increase the efficiency of the cell, which is shown here in figure nine. Suppose the index of refraction of the coating is denoted by N1, 
which is 1.45. And the index of refraction of the material under the coating is N2 equals 3.50. In this case, we need to maximize the amount of transmitted light to minimize the reflected light. And you determine the thickness of the untied reflective coating that will minimize the reflection of light with a wavelength of seven times 10 to the power of negative seven meters. Again, I'll give you five minutes to consider this problem, and then we'll have a look at the solution together.
All right, let's have a look at the solution here. So in this case, an incident light ray moving from air into medium one will partially reflect at the upper surface of the coating, right? Since medium one is more optically dense than air, a light will, will be reflected and inverted at the upper surface. Similarly, at the lower surface of medium one, a light will, will be reflected and inverted because medium two is more optically dense than medium one. So to maximize the amount of transmitted light through the coating, the two reflected rays from the upper and lower surface of the coating must undergo destructive interference. This means that the distance to T that ray two must travel compared to ray one is equal to half lambda. Therefore, use the formula for destructive interference when both waves change phase, which is the same as when both waves have no change of phase. We can set M equals zero to save the use of materials on the coding. So we have the following relationship here, 2T equals M plus one half times lambda over N film. So there is a typo here, this should be lambda, okay? And from this equation, we can solve 2t equals lambda over n 2n film, which gives us t equals lambda over 4n film, which is 1.21 times 10 to the power of negative 7 meters. So the thickness of the anti-reflective coating should be 1.21 times 10 to the power of negative seven meters. Any questions? Okay, if yeah, no questions, let's have a look at another concept, which is Newton's rings. If you place a glass disc with a convex surface in contact with a flat glass surface, as shown here in figure 10a, and illuminate it with a beam of light, a phenomenon called Newton's rings occur, which is shown here in figure 10b on the right. Light reflects from both the upper surface of the flat glass and the lower surface of the curved glass. The light reflecting from the flat glass plate changes phase because the air between the two glass surfaces has a lower index of refraction than the glass. However, the light reflecting from the lower surface of the curved glass does not change phase. The difference in path length T increases with the distance from the point of contact of the two glass surface. Therefore, monochromatic light of wavelength lambda has a bright fringe at each location where the separation T is half a whole number multiple of lambda. It has a dark range from the destructive interference at each location where the separation T is a whole number multiply, uh, is a whole number multiple of lambda. <clears throat> okay, so a practical application of Newton's rings is checking lenses for imperfections. Lenses are typically spherical in shape, and if shaped properly, will produce perfect circular Newton's rings when illuminated with light, which is shown here in figure 11a on the left. However, if the lens is imperfectly shaped, it will produce a pattern that clearly indicates a defective lens shape. This is, which is shown here in figure 11b on the right. Okay, next let's have a look at concept for air wedges. To create a measurable pattern of destructive and constructive interference, 
Researchers often use an air wedge, which is a wedge of air between two sheets of flat glass that have been angled to form a wedge. The upper glass is slightly raised by a small distance T and illuminated with monochromatic light, as shown here in figure 12. The interference patterns produced, such as the patterns in figure 13, or I didn't include third, figure 13 here. So, Okay, so the interference pattern is produced such as a pattern in figure 13 here, shown on the bottom right, can be used to measure very small distances. The measurable distance between fringes depends on the wavelengths of light and the distance t. Thus, if the distance is known, you can measure, you can use the fringe pattern to determine the wavelengths of light used. If you already know the wavelengths, you can use a measurable pattern to determine the width of the very small object, causing the separation of the layers of glass. To calculate the fringe pattern from T lambda and the length of the plate L, we need to determine the relative phase of waves reflecting from the bottom surface of the upper glass plate for example, in figure 12, point G, and the upper surface of the bottom glass plate, for example, point P in this figure, of point B in this figure, figure 12. At point A, where the glass edges meet, the 180 phase change of just one reflecting wave leads to destructive interference and a dark fringe. At point G, a light wave traveling through the first glass layer reaches a boundary where the index of refraction for air is less than that for glass. So light that reflects at point G has no phase change. The same reasoning applies at point F. The reflection of light at point B and C However, undergoes a phase change of 180 degrees. The reason is that light is traveling from air into glass, which is more optically dense than air. Thus, the dark fringes occur whenever the separation distance of the two plates at a particular location is a multiple of one wavelength. So to determine the first minimum, x1, set the difference in path length to half of lambda, which is a condition for destructive interference to occur. Triangles A, G, B, and A, F, C in figure 12 demonstrate that the first minimum meets the following condition, which is here. Okay, here. X1 over L equals half of the lambda over T. Thus, X1 equals L lambda over 2T. Then the next fringe, X2, occurs when the difference in path length for the reflection from the upper and lower plate is lambda, or X2 over L equals lambda T, which gives us lambda 2 equals, oh sorry, x2 equals lambda l over t, right? Thus, the separation between the two fringes is given by delta x equals x2 minus x1, which is l lambda over t minus l lambda over 2t, which is l lambda over 2t. So delta x equals lambda l over 2t. Okay, have a look at the uh, have a look at 
have a look at this model and we're going to use this model to solve a practical problem. All right, now let's consider this problem. Two glass plates are separated on one side by a human hair. The light shining on the plates have a, has a wavelength of 6.00 times 10 to the power of negative seven meters. The light intensity is zero at the point of contact of the two plates followed by nine alternating bright and dark fringes, which is shown here in figure 14. Can you estimate the thickness of the hair? Okay, I'll give you five minutes to consider this question, and then we'll have a look at the solution together. You can consider the model we have just learned here, okay? All right, you should finish now. Let's have a look at the solution here. So according to the previous model we have learned here, we know the relationship delta x equals L lambda over 2t, right? So 2t equals L lambda over delta x. Then simplify this formula gives us t equals 9 lambda over 2. So note here, we have L equals nine delta X, right? According to the given information, because nine complete cycles of passing from dark to light to dark areas along the wedge. So L equals nine delta X. So delta X can be canceled with each other here. Then t equals 9 lambda over 2. This gives us 2.70 times 10 to the power of negative 6 meters. So the estimated thickness of the hair is 2.70 mu m. Any questions? Okay, good. No questions. That's the end of today's class. I'll see you next time.